Hey YouTube, we had a couple of questions from some of our viewers about the yield on solar generation over the over a period of a year and how, how does it differ per season so we'll be taking you through that shortly uh, what I must add is that the evacuated tube solar heating for your geyser that will suffer the most over autumn and winter simply because the solar radiation is very very weak compared to summer however if you've got solar PV in addition to your solar EVTs then you could use your solar PV to supplement your geyser but that's only de dependent on the type of inverter that you've got if you've got a grid tile inverter then your grid tile inverter will be able to supplement your geyser without any issue so let's go ahead and go watch so this is the Goodwee Sims portal it's quite a rich source of information for all of your generation information and data and it has a quite a nice dashboard here as well where you could see what your generation is looking like for the day and for the month so we've generated 11.6 kilo hour hours so far and it's almost midday it also gives you an income and your total income and this is defined by the inputs that you supply so for example we are using 2 rand 50 per kilowatt hour and hence it gives us a calculation based on that and in this streaming graph you can see exactly what you generating from your panels at the moment what's coming out of your battery what your household is consuming and what are you consuming from the grid now because this is a grid tied inverter if your geyser is even although your geyser may not be on backup uh, power your geyser will still be supplemented by the inverter so if your geyser comes on during the day then you are going to be using some of your solar PV generated power to heat your geyser so looking at seasonal changes and your yield on your solar if you look at generation and uh, income and we look at a monthly view just give it a few moments to load there we go so we've got data from July so in July we generated 316 kilowatt hours sorry that was June July was 662 and you can see that it fluctuates quite a bit and coming to May this year that was the highest that we ever generated which is 848 kilowatt hours and January was 653 and December 731 so although the sun's the solar radiation in some during summer months is higher than the radiation in winter months because you have cloudy days more often in, in the summer months here in South Africa and particularly in the Johannesburg region where we would find that during the afternoons we have thunderstorms and so on and so forth so that cloud cover reduces our, our yield but if you look at on a per day basis we would I think we generated 34 kilowatt hours in January in the highest um, that was one of the highest days that we generated 34 kilowatt hours where during winter you would generally generate maybe between 27 and 30 kilowatt hours so look at let's, let's look at the peak here so that's 31 and the peak here 30 30 and if we go to this, this this was June we go to January so on the okay so the 12th of Feb 2020 we generated 32.9 kilowatt hours in one day peak year 34 yeah so the 30 34.5 kilowatt hours was registered on the 22nd of January and there was a highest ever I believe so far so 
as you can see there are several troughs and peaks there are quite a bit of peaks as well there was a period where we had uh, cloud cover for like a week and during that time we only generated like half of our total generation capacity so winter we would find in fact autumn we would find that we over a month we would generate the highest because we have more sunny days although the sun's radiation is not as intense as the summer as the summer months but because uh, we we have fewer days of cloud cover and and rain that's why overall for a month we would generate the highest all right thank you for watching